Hello friends! In earlier episodes I added Bluetooth capability to car stereos and home stereo systems. And in this episode I'm going to apply a similar idea to headphones. And ever since I came to Cologne I visited a lot of flea markets and I noticed that old rather stylish headphones are really cheap at the moment. And I think that what I'm going to show you in this video is another great way of combining the style and looks of decades past with the amazing technology of today. And what you need in order to add Bluetooth capability to these old headphones are Bluetooth receivers, as you can see them here, and there are different types on the market. Now, the one on the right is the type of receiver that I bought for earlier episodes and which I used in the episodes about the car stereo and the home stereo systems and you can find a link to that in the video description. And in these earlier videos you can also see what is in the inside of these enclosures. Now, this particular type of Bluetooth receiver has an audio output jack, an on and off switch and it has a USB jack which can be used in order to charge the internal battery of the receiver. And for this particular project it is important that you do not buy a Bluetooth receiver without a battery like the one here on the left, but rather one like this. And this is a type of Bluetooth receiver that I actually bought for this video and that I'm going to use in conjunction with two of our three headphones. So let's start then with the first of our three headphones. This particular model was manufactured or at least sold by a German company from Munich called Heru. And from the looks of it, I would guess that it was manufactured probably in the 1970s or early 1980s. And even though it's that old, I would guess that a lot of people today would like to wear headphones like this because they really look rather stylish. And you can see that it has an old rather worn out cable and an old fashioned 6.3 millimeter headphone plug that also appears to be not part of the original equipment of these headphones. And because they came from the flea market and are a little dirty, I start by cleaning them up all around. And the next thing that I do is to look for a place where I can install one of our Bluetooth receivers. And for that I remove this old aluminium plate here on the side of the headphones. And I remove some of the old residual glue before going on. And I will use MS polymer that is modified silane in order to glue the enclosure of this receiver to the headphones. And I did this as a first step because the glue needs some time to harden. I waited for two days and will now go on with the remaining steps of this project. And what I do is to cut the old cable to such a length that it can be used to attach it to the receiver but still be long enough so that the headphones can be adjusted to different head sizes. And the next thing that I bought is this replacement 3.5mm headphone plug that can simply be soldered to any given cable. And now the headphone jack can be plugged into the Bluetooth receiver and this is what the result looks like. I know it's kind of an unusual sight and I also flipped it around here from left to right but I guess that it's just a better idea if you have the remaining cable on the back side of your ear. And we will test these modified headphones along with all the other ones at the end of this video. And our second model here is another Heru brand item that I bought for only one euro on a local flea market. And you can see that again the wire is pretty worn out and also take a look at this botched connector here. Someone had his hands on this before. And what I do again is to remove the little aluminium plate and this time properly sand off the old glue and then also sand the surface of the receiver a little bit. And this time I'm using the smaller newer type of receiver because I couldn't buy the old type anymore. And the biggest difference here really is that it is smaller and it has a wire with a headphone plug instead of a jack. So this time I cut off the connector and use a wire stripper to get to the conductors inside. But if you take a closer look at the actual wires inside that cable, you can see that they are insulated on the outside and there are different ways to remove that insulation. One imperfect but rather cheap and easy way is to scrape off the majority of the insulation with a knife. You have to do that carefully in order not to damage the wires too much. 
And after that, you can use a soldering iron like this really cheap one that I'm using here in Cologne in order to apply some tin to the wires. And now the old and the new wires inside these cables can be soldered together. And small pieces of heat shrink are used to insulate the soldering spots from each other and a large piece of heat shrink is used in order to cover up and further insulate and protect the cable connecting receiver and headphones. And here you can see what our second example looks like. And again, I flipped the right and the left side because it just so happened that the wire looked better on the back side of the ear. So let's come to our third and final example. And this is something special, an old fashioned headset manufactured by Siemens and it's called a DT-98. And this of course combines headphones with a microphone, but we will not really use the microphone in this example. It's just a nerdy gimmick, so to speak. You would need, I guess, another type of Bluetooth transceiver in order to really use this as a Bluetooth headset. And the first thing that I do is to remove this old connector cable here, which at both ends doesn't use the, at least today, typical headphone jacks and plugs at all, but uses connectors that look at least quite similar to DIN connectors. And in the next step, I probably clean this headset, which by the way, I also bought for just one euro. And again, I prepare both the surface of the receiver as well as of the headphones in order to connect the two together. But this time I'm using super glue or cyanoacrylate in order to glue the two parts together and I apply some pressure with the help of this little vise here. But this time it all works a little different. And what you can see is that one of the speakers here is not even attached to any cable or wire of any sorts. And that is because these two metal parts that make up the frame are also used as conductors for the audio signals. And we open up this little enclosure here and can see inside that the connectors of the jack inside this little gray enclosure are just directly soldered to these metal parts of the frame. And what I do is to remove a little chunk of the plastic of this enclosure and lead the cutoff and no more insulated wires from the receiver through that hole and then solder them directly to the frame. And I also connect two of the frame parts together to create a common ground, which wasn't existent before here. And this is what this super geeky, but in my opinion, pretty cool contraption looks like in the end. Now, I don't know if you guys would wear this, but I'm really thinking about it. Okay, so now that I have shown you how you could possibly apply this idea, let's take a look at some of the results. Yeah. Uh -huh. 